Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're ready to get into finishing up the power supply wiring and install the heater wiring and kind of using this as a demo of like this is what it's basically going to look like when we're done. So let's don't waste a lot of time. Let's get to working on this amp. Okay, so we need to prep our star ground point. And the first thing you're going to have to do is the hole in here is probably going to be just a breath too small. I'm actually using 1032 button head screws, the ones that look like this. So I've got a bunch of these I want to use up, but once I've used these up, I'm probably going to switch to 832 button head screws for holding the iron down. And that's what I'm going to be including in the future kits. And so still going to not fit through here easily. The 1032 doesn't even begin to. So get a Dremel tool with a point like this on it or a little file and just open the hole up. And then once you get that filed out or Dremel tooled out, you'll be able to get the screw to go through the hole like that. So, and it doesn't matter if it slides through or you, it has to thread through because you're going to be threading it anyway. And it'll, yeah, it'll work great. So the next thing we need to do is we need to connect all three of these together. So now we need to cut a couple of pieces of wire. We're going to use 18 gauge solid core. We're going to go from here to here, from there to there. And then we'll have two of them in here. And you don't want to do it on this side because you'll end up with a big glob here and you won't be able to put the nut. And, you know, while it would be easier to solder to this side, and actually if you really wanted to, you could just put pieces up here on the top part. I like doing it down low so it leaves these open for more wires if we do need to put them in there. So you just get your stripper strip off a piece of wire like that and you bend up bend one end over and then you can come in and figure out where it needs to be bent over for the other side cut it off and then if you're lucky It'll fit right in place like that. We do one more. And again, this is this is probably going to be a lot of videos. Because in the past, when I've done these build videos, inevitably somebody's going, I didn't see where you put this one wire. Or, you know, you didn't really show that in detail. And if this is going to be the instructions for the kit, it needs to be pretty high detail. I'm hoping that people that buy these kits will take the time to learn how to read schematics, but I have to assume that people buying these kits don't know how to read a schematic and they need to be shown where every wire goes. And so we're going to do that. So first you come in, you put a little bit of solder on the tip to get the flux and the solder flowing and then you come in and once it starts melting you kind of roll a bunch of solder around and then we're going to do the same on this side over here And I'm showing you doing this just sitting on a towel. Because I'm sure some of you aren't going to have anything to like hold stuff while you're soldering. But I will say having a little stand like this. Let me zoom out and see what this looks like. Having a little stand like this with some alligator clips to hold stuff while you're soldering it. It's super handy and these things are pretty cheap but anyway there's our thing soldered up be careful these things are gonna be hot let's burn my fingers there 
and then you can tell you've done a good job it's flowed through on this side it doesn't hurt anything to come back and put a little bit of flux in the solder because the flux is in the solder so doing a little extra like that isn't going to hurt anything there we go and now we're ready to bolt this down inside the amp now one thing you do have to watch out for if you look when I was adding some solder to this side see how I got the solder down in this little corner right here that's gonna be a problem the nut won't be able to tighten down so you want to you're probably not gonna be able to see this real well on camera but if you've got a little stand like that where you can hold it upside down and then you come in and heat up the solder gravity is your friend and it'll pull the solder out of that little corner so the nut can seat and let me show you what that looks like see that got the solder out of the corner so the nut can tighten down and really I didn't need to add solder to this side it was soldered good but just in case you want to really get a good solder connection on all those it doesn't hurt to flow it from both sides so let's get this bolted into the amp and that'll do it for this segment so this is our last transformer bolt so then we put our bolt through we slide our little star ground point tag strip screw the nut down and then come through with our allen wrench and tighten this one down and there we go got our star ground point tag strip on the ground down bare metal there so we got a really solid signal ground to the chassis we got our safety ground also bare metal to the chassis with double nuts we got the longer bolt here with a nut and then just the two short nuts over there and got our transformer wires out and we'll be ready to install the choke and start wiring up the power supply okay so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to install the choke and since the last segment i went ahead and finished up all the fab work on the chassis i made the decision that we're going to be installing the iso tango output transformers on this chassis and so they have four holes and we got this big center hole where the turret sticks through which is the connections to the inside of the transformer which we'll see later also we put the speaker jacks across here in the back see a little better here we've got our speaker jacks across here we also are going to be installing two pairs of rca input jacks in the back which is a very common request for these amplifiers that people are asking for the jacks to be in the back and they want two pairs we also cut this square hole here which our rocker switch will snap into and fabricating that was not for the faint of heart if you've never fabricated anything before probably not a good thing to do on your first round I did the same technique where I drilled a hole in each corner, used the Dremel tool to cut between the holes, and then I came back in with a flat file and opened it up to the precise size for the switch to pop in. Then we've got our hole here for the audio note volume control, and you can see it's kind of an oval shape. It keeps it from turning. The Alps pots are a little easier to deal with. You just drill a hole here, and then it's got another hole off to the side that locates the potentiometer to keep it from turning. I mean, once it's bolted down with the nut, it's not likely to turn, but again, this oval shape keeps it from rotating. The shaft itself or the collar has two flats on the sides of it. And then we punch the hole here in the front for our power switch, which we're going to be wiring up in this segment as well. So, next thing, like I said, we're going to be installing the choke. Got one that's already been painted. So, the next step is to get our choke. And we just have two wires. And like I showed you on the power transformer, or maybe I did, but I'll show you on this. 
go ahead and cut this stripped ends off of these. It really makes it difficult to put it through the grommet if you have those stripped back frayed ends. And so this one's really simple. You just run the wire through and we're going to attach the four screws. We're actually going to leave this one out for now because we're going to have to put a tag strip there. And it is handy to have some scraps of wood like this to kind of keep the thing level while you're working on it. But once we get the transformers all mounted, it will sit level on its own. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to prep the tag strips that we're going to be using in this amp. And I think we'll go ahead and do all of those right now. So let me show you how to do that. Okay, for this, you are going to need either a Dremel tool with a little cutoff wheel like this, or I guess you could use a small little hobby saw or even like a really fine hacksaw blade would probably work. But we're going to be modifying these tag strips. And the first one we're going to do is going to take one of these five terminal tag strips and with the lug facing you, we're going to cut one of these on the end off. So we end up with a four terminal strip with this one as the mounting. So you just get your little Dremel cutoff thing and just like that. Cut that one off. So the next one we're going to modify, we got two of these long ones and we are going to use one end of one of these, I can't remember which one, I think it's this one. But anyway, we're going to cut off three from this end. So have them sitting like this away from you with the terminals facing in like that or with the mounting points facing in. And then count in one, two, three. We're going to cut it right there. So we're going to cut this one off. like that and then we're going to do the same thing with this one and we're doing this because I couldn't easily find these tag strips laid out in the way that I need them to be done so the other thing we're going to be doing is we're not going to be using this solder terminal that's made onto the mounting whole lug and so to strengthen these we're going to be bending this part over and then soldering it together to give it some extra strength honestly this is a 100 percent mandatory if you don't want to do this or you just want to skip this step it's not going to be the end of the world but i do feel like it makes the tag strip stronger to do this and i bend this over with the most hated tool on the channel, my ancient little mini channel locks. And we're going to do that to all the tag strips. You can do the first part just bending it over with your fingers. These things aren't really that stiff or that heavy duty. And then this is the one we're going to be using that was cut off. Because the way I've laid this out, I was able to create ground points without having to use this part that's bolted to the chassis so we don't have to worry about potential ground loops having things grounded even a little bit in multiple locations throughout the amp and i know previous bills some people had talked about that i haven't had a big issue with you know if i do have this bolted down and this is a remote ground running a ground wire from here like a solid copper wire over to the star ground point but it really is ideal to not have to do that and it does make these tag strips more heavy duty to have this bent over like that and then 
And this is where this little alligator clip thing comes in real handy. Just come in here and hold it like that. And heat this up. Just like that. And then we flip this over. There we go. Got it nice soldered back to itself. And that's just going to strengthen up the mounting point for all these tank strips. So let me go through and solder all these up and I'll show you what this looks like. We'll do one more here just so you can kind of see the process. Always touch the solder to the tip and that flows a little flux out of the solder and onto the thing that we're soldering, which is this little terminal strip and then once you get it flowing into that bottom part just like that now if you do put too much solder it can run out of this hole and run down here in this little area here that I showed you before and really you don't need to come in on this side and solder too there's no point in it but if you do run too much through, you can hold it up like this and put it in the little alligator clip like that. And then come back and heat it up from this side and gravity will be your friend and solder will flow through and out of your way. There we go. We got a nice secure little reinforcement there. So let me go ahead and solder all these up. And again, this isn't entirely necessary if you don't just don't want to deal with this. And you can actually just cut these off if you don't want to deal with folding them over. Or you could just fold them over and not solder them. But I felt like it was just giving it a little extra reinforcement to come in and solder them all. So let me get all these soldered and then we'll get to installing the tag strip and move on with our power supply. So when you get done, you should have four of these five terminal strips that have basically four usable ones. You've got two like this, a left and a right, that have four terminals. Then you've got one like this that has one terminal on this side, two on this side, and then you have these two left over. And like I said, depending on the transformers you're using, you may use this one, you may use this one, and these are going to be used for the 6.3 volt heaters. This is going to be used for our high voltage B plus filtering capacitors. These two are used for the cathode bypass capacitors and the cathode resistors. These two are connected to the other side of the output tubes between the output tubes and the driver tube and then these two go on each side of the driver tube to supply the voltage and grid connections and all that for the driver tube so let's get back to working on the power supply well this is like a good place to wrap up this video I know this is going to end up being a zillion videos but I feel like this is an important enough project that I just need to go really slow and make sure you see point by point, solder joint by solder joint, how to assemble this thing. And so, yeah, we'll just, it'll be however many videos it is. And you folks that are really interested in this, I'm sure you'll watch them all. And I know some of you guys just kind of like watching me work on this stuff, so you'll like watching these anyway. So I did realize that I'm missing one of these size clamps for the capacitor. So I have to think about that if I want to like solder that in without this clamp or not. We'll figure that out and come back and put the clamp on or just maybe jump over to a different part of the amp. But we'll see in the next video where that goes. So anyway, I think I'll wrap it up here. 
you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you regular viewers on my channel and all you folks that support Skunky Designs, either buying my products or, you know, donations to the website or using my affiliate links or whatever you can do to help me out, even if it's just watching, subbing, and liking my videos. So anyway, till the next video, have a nice day.